Because um, thanks to Extinction Rebellion, Greta Thunberg and David Attenborough, among others, many of us are waking up to the scale of the climate emergency facing us. Mm. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says we have just 12 years to avert a catastrophe affecting hundreds and millions of people. Changing how we shop and eat is good, but it doesn't go far enough or fast enough. And solutions to the climate emergency won't work <clears throat> if we end up passing on costs to people least able to afford it. That's why we need to see bold state-led proposals on both sides of the Atlantic. We need structural change, not surface change, to transform the economy, rewiring it towards renewables and away from polluting energy sources. But a green revolution has to be a fair one, so it's about cheaper energy and better jobs, as well as cleaner air and water. We don't have the time or the luxury of tinkering at the edges or waiting for the market to sort it out. Only large-scale state intervention can effectively tackle our climate crisis. Oh, wow. Welcome, Rachel. Thank yeah. you. Um, the calm before the storm. Yeah, no, no, no. Enjoy that bit no of the night. Storm. No storm at all. That was it. No that storm at all. Um, and anyway, she's perfectly capable of handling it. Um, you've heard of Energy Wender, haven't you? Um, this was, this was uh, in 2011. Angela Merkel and the German government announced that they were going to look away from nuclear energy after the, the tsunami in Japan, where, where it, um, mm. a nuclear plant was damaged, and they were going to turn to renewables. Um, it was the biggest single political project since reunification of Germany. And seven years later, and 160 billion euros later, it's an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. In that time, there has been one day where, where the, it was sunny and the wind was right, <laughs> and, and they managed to produce 56 gigawatts of energy, which powered this, this <laughs> the fourth industrialised, biggest nation in the world. It powered it, but that's for one day only. And now the German people are up in arms because they're saying it's too expensive, it's chaotic, it's not working, no one can do it properly. Um, most of Germany's electricity is still, is still powered by burning coal. Um, and, and I just think if, if a country as efficient as Germany <laughs> can't make this work, we have absolutely no, no chance. chance. <laughs> so I, can, I, can I just come in here? Yeah. I don't think Might we have well. to go the. I don't think we have to go the German route. I, I, I personally, look, I was I was so inspired by. Uh, Extinction Rebellion. I know they were an inconvenience. Oh, oh come on, right? goodness! I know they were an inconvenience, sake. but I was inspired by them because it made it raised it yoga. my consciousness. Didn't even realise right? that was controversial. Okay. But okay, yeah, that's, well, that's where we're at. And, okay, and, good to know. And I think, <laughs> I think we and do. I'm an environmentalist. Listen, right. here's the point. I think we do need to take drastic action. And the reason uh, that we need to take we address the action, I think we can subscribe to it, even if uh, I think you're a... Say some, some people might be climate change sceptics, skepti mm. but I think we can still subscribe to the need to take drastic action because of air pollution and its effect on our children, for yeah, example. Right? Now, you don't have to, to be a climate scientist to understand uh, that our children are breathing in particles that no, are true, yeah. making it difficult for their health and uh, they're developing asthmatic systems or other uh, symptoms, sorry, or other forms of uh, illnesses as a result of our polluted air, which sits about here, which is the height of a child. Yeah. Mm. So I think we have to take drastic mm -hmm. action. And one of the things I think the government needs to do um, very, very quickly is create the ability to charge electric cars all over the, the, the country uh, because currently you buy those electric cars and there's nowhere to charge them. Yeah. So you can't really... It's just no point, right? We are taking... You know, you're talking like we're doing nothing. We are taking action. We are... You know, this country is only responsible for 1.1% yeah, of carbon emissions in the entire world. Uh, I, China yeah, is 60%. Yeah, yeah, and more. and yeah. last year, yeah. we, we reduced our carbon emissions can by 2%. Can I just, That's can what I I just say... Sure. Sorry. Can I... Just yeah. because we'd better correct yeah. the record. Let's take a look at... I want to share with you all the share of annual carbon dioxide emissions for 2016. You slightly overstated it there, uh, Kautia. China's 29.1%. Okay. United States, 152 India, 7 UK, 1.1%. Curses of our world in data, global carbon projection. So we're 1.1%. China yeah. is third. I mean, this is really... Yes. But there, there's, there's a goodness. historical... We're, uh, we're, not, we're not on a level playing right. field, are we? I'm enjoying getting uh. to know you because, clearly, you are 
so minded that the state can solve everything, yes. right? Whether it's the poor, poor folk in Scunthorpe, whether it's global <laughs> emissions, this is a governments can't even get railways built. Yeah. The idea mm. that they could do this is absolutely ridiculous. Should we be trying to do more? Yes. So Should I... we fly less? Probably yes. Should we have reusable we bags? I'm all for that. Charges. But when you look at this, we could we could hardly be carols. We could hardly be doing any more. So can I yeah. have a little more ambition, please? Can yeah. I just One respond point, to that point? Well, can I just respond to that point directly? Yes. Because I know when we talk about nationalisation and state ownership. I know that for certain people there's a heart back to, you know, incompetent, bad old days when the state was running yeah. things three day week rubbish on the streets, right? But what we're talking about now is something that is much more modern, it's decentralised, it's municipal. The example that people are looking to is Denmark, actually, where these things are very localised, mm. they're very community-led. Um, wind power alone accounts for 42% of uh, Denmark's energy in 2015. It doesn't and the, in Germany, though, And the HR. way that you... The reason that you, re you localise it is because regions know best... What's right for them. What's right for them. So it might be... It might be marine turbines in the okay. Mersey, or it might be so. Okay. Power. Can I, yeah. 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 Can I just say something, Rachel? I think, I totally see where you're coming from, but I think this issue is actually too big to rely solely on government. I think we need a private-public <coughs> partnership. Oh, nice. And so really yeah. what I'd be much more interested in is the government incentivising the private sector to come up with solutions and also using our government facilities for research to actually do the R&D and then invest in the private sector to actually implement this stuff. Mm. Because we know with the government it's the implementation that usually... Can I also on. add something to the mix here? Yeah. I think we've, we should be looking at nuclear. Well, I was oh, just going to... Controversial. France did it. France did it. Let's ask to Germany, Rachel about they've done it quite nuclear. well. Yeah. Look, watch the documentary, Pandora's Secret. OK, so... It's quite good. So what yeah. I would say about the reason that this needs to be state-led is purely, number one, it's the scale of the problem, and number two, we need to make sure it's fair. So when we look at, just as an example, well, be the two when today? we look at the, exa the example of the la Labour's just announced this policy to put solar panels in a million a million and three-quarter of a million homes. So the first million will be free. They will be social housing. Let's look at what we get from that. But what we asked you let's was just, about nuclear. Let's we just asked look you at, about nuclear. Let's energy. just look at what we get from that, and then we can go back to nuclear. Okay. If we do that, we get each household saving £117 a year. We, we this have... This is minutiae. We go have, back to nuclear. Well, you're talking so? about minutiae, but this is, how, this is how people live. This can is I, how our country works. Can I just say something on solar, right? Solar panels, I think, I understand it to be the case. I might be wrong. But actually, the environmental cost of making those damn things. Okay. Right, you is, in terms of carbon emissions to make the solar panel, it does more damage to the environment than the energy but you no, save. But That's what that I've the understood. First batch? Once you've got more <laughs> like, of this sort like... of renewable energy in place, that doesn't you, become as you bad. You have to invest in it to begin with. It's a yeah. bit like getting double glazing, isn't it? It's right. Like pledge panelists. <laughs> you know, the ones who are with the expensive ones and they want to keep arriving there. The so, I'm going to, I'm going to say the word nuclear again. Yes. Ah. To you. Cheapest. Do you wish? It's cleanest, the cheapest. And today is safe. It produces efficient it used at a ninety one percent efficiency uh, rate. It's no very, carbon, very cheap. And very no safe. damage to air yep. quality. Yep. Expensive to build, but cheap to run. Yep. Why not nuclear? I'm not saying we should exclude or include any of these things. And to your point, June, mm. I think what we're looking at when things like energy is that the state owns the national grid, so it's responsible okay. for distribution mm. and supply. I don't and, want and them on distribution. But, supplies, but then you but then you actually get do. on the local level, you get yeah, yeah. people deciding. She's not answering on nuclear, is she? No, no. no, no it's, it's a very, and, and the thing is, because people fear nuclear because of the consequences yes, of a disaster, but yeah. it's a bit like an aeroplane. It's safer to fly. Sorry, I know that's not good for the environment, but just on a side note, it's safer to fly than it is to drive, to drive cars. Yeah. But people are more scared of flying because of the consequences of crash will kill everyone on board. Yeah. And nuclear is like that. It's very, in the, with the state of technology as it is today, it's very unlikely to have another Boring fact. Disaster. Very to back that up, it's a study show that even the worst possible accident in a nuclear plant is less destructive than other major yeah. accidents. Yeah. Enough of that hot air. <laughs> we move on. Oh, no, You're watching here. the pledge on Sky News. Up next, a lesson for the panel in fairness. Oh.